Hi, this is your host Sapan Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk and today we have with us once again John Amaral, co-founder and CEO of Slim.ai and Gal Malakai, director of software engineering at Big ID. John, Gal, it's great to have you both on the show. Great to be here, Swap. Good to see you again. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Uh, John, you and I have spoken so many times, though, you know, sometimes it's too much gap. We should talk more frequently, but uh, Gal, it's yes, the I'd first time. To. Yeah, uh, Gal, this is the first time you know you are on the show. So I would love to know a bit about the company itself. Talk a bit about the company. What do you folks do? Um, so Big ID is a modern data intelligence uh, platform uh, for privacy, protection, and uh, governments uh, that is built on the foundation of uh, in uh, or discovery in depth. In depth. Um, basically, um, our customers deploy Big ID to discover, manage, uh, protect. Um, and get more value from the regulated, sensitive, and personal data across the uh, entire data li- landscape. Um, so this is what we do. Can you talk about some of the use cases where Big ID is being used? You know, in, in the privacy domain, uh, of course, we help uh, companies to uh, be uh, compliant with certain regulation like a GDPR in Europe or CCPA in California and, uh, and so on. Uh, in the... Um, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, security and protection uh, uh, domain. So uh, we help uh, detect, uh, you know, so so, you, so we can scan, of course, your your entire data, whether it's, uh, if, if it's um, structured or unstructured data sources, and uh, let you know uh, if you have, let's say, files with open access uh, that are available to the world and, sh- and need to be protected, if you need to take certain actions, on um, um, certain, uh, uh, you know, domains or, or data sources that you have. So we give you a lot of visibility on your enterprise data and how you protect it, how you manage sensitive information um, in all of uh, uh, those uh, domains. And one of the reasons we are talking today is the partnership that Slim.ai and Big ID you folks have forged. Uh, so, John, I would like to hear from you. Tell us a bit about this partnership. Big ID and, and Slim have been working together for a while to help Big ID um, address the security of their application. And uh, they, they're very serious about not only helping their customers protect data and be secure with uh, and be compliant, but they also care a lot about the security composition of their application. And their, their application um, is containerized. Um, and of course, Slim is all about helping people protect and understand and and uh, and manage the composition of containers. And so we um, we started discussing a while back about how what we do at Slim and how they'd like to create more security and, and a better composition for their containers, how we could work together to help them re- reach some objectives. And um, just like any other company today who is shipping software to their customers, in this case, they ship as containers and some, in, in, and they also deploy containers as, to make their app. Um, they're interested in, in continuing to raise the bar on the security. Gal's uh, very deeply involved in that. Uh, they take security of their app very, very seriously. They're a world-class company when it comes to security and securing their own applications as part of that. And so we, we thought it was like a natural partnership to see how we could help them further their journey on making the most secure app for their customers. And that also brings me to the next question, because if you look at Slim, you know, the name itself goes, you know, you folks have kind of evolved over time. Your focus has also kind of shifted uh, from Slimming containers to secure. So talk about all the evolution of Slim.ai itself and why you felt the need for this evolution or kind of shift of focus. Historically, our company has been focused on helping developers and DevSecOps and DevOps people do three big objectives. Understand and evaluate the software that's inside your containers to um, ship only the code you need inside of the container so that it can run into your production environment. And third, optimize the security profile and reduce vulnerabilities in containers. These three objectives are highly aligned with the sort of modern ambitions and concerns in our industry around software supply chain security. If you do those three things, you can really take control of software supply chain security and make a much more secure application. So in that case, our our technology, our SaaS, our open source have been used to accomplish those three objectives for a long time by thousands and thousands and thousands of developers. And so 
Um, in that vein, it's very much the same, except that what we were finding is users of our platform and users of our software were starting to really attach its use to these security objectives. Two important ones. One is, how can you help me through hardening and slimming and through your tools, understand and remove more vulnerabilities from my containers faster? Software supply chain concerns like the, the attacks on um, on um, on on um, you know the supply chain that have been happening lately at Log4j. These are all recent issues that have driven people to care more about vulnerability reduction. And it turns out our tools are in our in our in our platform is very good for that. And so it's an outcome of using our platform the way we built it. But the security messaging is something that really resonates with users. And so we've we've started to um, tell a story there, and it's been very very successful. So uh, that's really the evolution. It's more of a positioning evolution than it is a technical evolution. Our product's pretty much the same, except it it helps folks get to these outcomes. Now, of course, we've been evolving. With, with customers like and partners like Big ID, um, and, um, and they've helped us mature the solution to be um, very focused on some of these security outcomes. Yeah, and then I look at uh, the kind of shift in focus or the three core areas that you talk about. That's where kind of industry is also moving. Uh, security is kind of becoming, it used to be an afterthought, but it's kind of becoming a primary focus of companies because nothing can ruin uh, the image of a company than a security breach or your name on a newspaper one day. Uh, but let's go back to a big idea as well. Sometimes when we look at security and privacy, these are two different things even, you know. So, but uh, they're also intermingled because, you know, without securing privacy can be compromised. So can you also talk about, once again, in this context, the importance of security, and then we'll also talk about, you know, how more slim AI is kind of helping folks like Big ID. So uh, you can start, Gal, and then we will, I'd like to hear some thoughts from uh, John as well. Um, yeah, it, it makes sense in a way. I mean, uh, we we'll, we we'll look at them as, as do, uh, two different uh, domains, two different pillars that, of course, they, they interact with each other. So we look at the problem as, you know, um, we understand that companies today, usually big organization enterprises, they, they have a lot of data. And first of all, they need to understand what they have in, inside the organization. Because today, you know, we have uh, um, traditional uh, databases, RDBs, right, and, and NoSQL and different systems that, that we work with and interact with. And all of that, all of them are, are keeping data of our customers, our employees, and of course, we need to uh, keep uh, the data secured, protected, and keep the uh, uh, you know privacy and and comply with the, comply uh, to be complied with the different regulations, privacy regulations, different states, um, uh, um, um, and for so basically, what we do, we look at the data, and we analyze the data, we catalog the data, and we classify the data, and based on that, we can later understand what we need to protect, what we need to keep, which action the organization needs to, uh, to take to actually act on, on privacy and security. So this is you know, you know, usually how we look at the problem, starting with the data um, and then, and then giving, giving the customers the ability to take action on top of that, whether if it's in the privacy domain or security domain, or also just to, get, uh, to, to be able to govern the data as well. John, now I'll come to you uh, to to understand, you know, once again, uh, the role security plays in to help players like Big ID as well. Uh, so, can you talk about that? Any in, in this case with uh, with Big ID, their application is relied on by the you know the world's most critical companies uh, across industries to be the foundation for their data security, right? And 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 governance and compliance. So their app is is the is is, is creating a, a, a really important role in the ability for those companies to secure their most critical assets. And, you know, subsequently, right, Gal's, you know, Gal's uh, ambition and, and Big ID's ambition is to make sure that the application, the Big ID application, is, is, is a secure point in the fabric of any other company's data security regime. So your security is only as good as the security of the tools you use to secure yourself. It's kind of a, how secure is the security? And, um, and, and the folks at Big ID take this very, very seriously. I think this is why it's a beautiful companionship for us in, 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 in these goals. They're, um, they're taking very modern and proactive measures to ensure that the applications that they provide for their customers 
are ultimately secure and all, and, and then can serve that role as a security posture for their customers. In doing so, right, they, they're taking um, very proactive steps to ensure that application integrity that they that they provide to their customers. And so um, so that they they are, of course, uh, the pinnacle of security in that system. And so we've been working together now through this de this design partnership to um, to continually evolve and improve and take very modern approaches to helping them um, actively and automatically secure um, these the, the core of their application, which are the containers that deliver their app. So I think that's um, you know the they, they want to they're they're taking this very proactive step. Lots of times, security app security is a reactive thing. You you build an app right. And then you deploy it and you look at how it's deployed and then you try to secure around it. And I would say that the critical difference here in this, in this work we're doing is it's proactive. Every time they build their app, we, um, they work with Slim's tooling capabilities to reassess the application profile and maximize the uh, security posture of their containers every single time. So this is a automatic, proactive, continuous, compositional security measures so that their apps are secure from the inside out. Um, and I know they have other measures they do too, even upstream closer to the developers, but this is a in the development loop automated security approach that we've developed together. And, um, and it provides them with the most up-to-date and secure posture. And I think this is a remarkably advanced way of thinking that they have. And um, and I think it's a lot. Of, it's a it's a pattern for how other companies should be approaching the same problem. We talk about security, or when we look at Slim and the kind of user base, customers base, the kind of clients you are serving, they may have totally different unique use cases. So so can you also talk about you know some of the evolutions of your technologies, some of the the evolution of the platform, the the new features that you have added that is kind of you know serving a wide range of customers. Because industry is moving in that direction either way to make things more secure. Our platform has evolved quite a bit since the last time we talked. We have a, a number of, uh, of new and exciting and evolved features. First and foremost, the platform is used by thousands and thousands of, uh, of developers and, and teams. And what they're trying to do is what I said earlier, understand and evaluate their containers from the inside out and to see what code is there, understand it, manage it, and, 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 and understand how to secure it better. Two, they want to minimize the code that's in their containers so that they only ship to production what they need. That's a significant part of the software supply chain security agenda. You shouldn't be managing and sending code to production if it's not something that your app relies on. And the third, let's remove as many vulnerabilities as possible. In, in our platform's evolution toward those objectives to make that really, really easy for our developers to accomplish those three things, we've really started to zoom in on how we help you remove code and remove vulnerabilities and understand vulnerabilities in, in, in the containers you have. And really for any container that you run, we're, we're, we're really have built a platform as a generic um, containerized software uh, management evaluation and optimization platform where hardening these images is a key outcome that we want, removing vulnerabilities and making them secure from the inside out. To that end, we've added a bunch of features one, um, we, we, we believe we're the only platform that exists that has a multi-vulnerability scanner engine capability. So today we have two open source scanners that are there. We're going to be adding more, more scanners, bring your own license type thing where you can use third-party scanners through our platform. But you can scan a container once on our platform and get the viewpoint from several vulnerability scanners. It gives you a, you know, a much broader and richer evaluation of that container. And then when you see those vulnerabilities, we've built in automations and automatic automatic hardening in the platform where you can then see what runs inside of your container. You can apply your own testing to the container while we watch. We do static and dynamic analysis, and then we can also remove any packages that are unnecessary, remove vulnerabilities, and harden the image so that you're, 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 you're sure that through this automation that you're always shipping the most optimally minimal and secure and vulnerability-free container to your production. These two features are something we've been evolving now for several months with design partners like uh, like Big ID and um, are starting to put it to work in their production systems and uh, and, and get that value to uh, be delivered. And we're adding more all the time with package management, SBOM creation. These things are coming soon. 
and um, and we want to build this kind of generically useful container software supply chain security solution. Big ID may be a kind of exception here because they themselves have a focus on privacy security, but there are a lot of uh, other uh, you know users customers. I don't want to name any like for example uber hack was a social engineering but you would not expect a company like uber to be compromised like that so there are so when they can get compromised let's we cannot even talk about a lot of other players so uh, yes there are tools there are technologies but we also need cultural you know or mindset uh, uh, focus so john i would like to hear from you first that how do you look at that problem because tools themselves are not enough and then well, i would like to hear from you that what kind of practices companies should have or you folks have to have the cult the mindset of security not just in the tech stack but also the culture within the company. I've seen a really um, that's a great question by the way. I've seen a great um, a kind of shift right now happening in our industry that the people um, who are building and, and running code are starting to really focus on the security of the apps from the inside out. I think this is a great transformation. Um, it's been happening slowly, but I think it's really accelerated lately where. Uh, folks who build, folks who build the app themselves are starting to think about, am I doing everything I can to secure the app from the inside out? This development and software uh, industry mindset shift caused kind of really driven home recently by software supply chain concerns and risk is really shifting the industry's mindset from one of, um, hey, let's build code and ship it as fast as we can to it's our job as developers to build and ship secure code as fast as we can. It's a it's a it's an industry movement right now, and um, and I think that's really the only way it can be solved from the inside out. We need to build intrinsically secure apps. You can't secure them later. It's too hard. But we need to ship secure code from the beginning. And I think if that if that cultural mind shift changes, and and tools come to the party, and techniques come to the party, and the developer and developer leader mindset becomes one of Shipping secure code is the minimum bar, not just shipping code is the minimum bar. I think we'll have a much more secure industry and a much more secure application landscape. Gal, you're, you're, I'd love to hear you. You know, I totally agree. I think that, um, you know, security, uh, it should be part of every step in the development life cycle. So it starts from the ID of the developer uh, to the testing fr framework, of course, to the CI CD, to the depo uh, deployment pipelines. Uh, you know, uh, WAF is not good enough. Uh, I mean, we have to have um, uh, uh, different uh, checkpoints at every step of the development cycle, uh, uh, specifically for, uh, you know, uh, whether if it's on-prem deployment or cloud deployment, you really have to have all the tools. I think um, uh, what's unique about uh, Slim AI is that they actually gives you the ability to, uh, you know, remove the clutter, remove the noise, and just deal with the vulnerabilities that actually matters to your code. Because we in Bigity, we have a lot of tools, and we have, uh, you know, uh, a lot of tools across the, the entire supply chain. But with uh, Slim AI, we are able to remove vulnerabilities that are not even exploitable, that, that uh, we don't even ship them, uh, actually, and actually uh, uh, simplify the reports and the um, uh, process of handling vulnerabilities because we focus on uh, the stuff that actually matters, right? Um, so uh, this is, I mean, the, the biggest value we see from uh, using uh, Slim AI. You know, I think there's a industry shift going on. For the last decade or so, we've, we've uh, spent our time thinking about DevOps, how to automate the building of infrastructure. I think we're entering the age of DevSecOps where you automate the application of security as you build software. And I think, um, you know, I, I, you know, DevOps is about, is about a process of, of building software and deploying. DevSecOps is about doing it securely. I think this is a major transformation I see in the industry today. Uh, this analogy may sound stupid and moronic, but when I look at go and buy cars, I don't install airbags or brakes after I bought the car. You know, it comes. So in the software industry, uh, security is still something, you know, uh, separate than the. So when you do talk about, you know, the shift toward DevSecOps, are we kind of moving towards the phase where airbags and brakes comes pre-installed <laughs> with the, the service that you're using? That's right. Exactly. You don't build an insecure car after the fact. You build, I mean, I build a secure car after the fact. You can't bolt enough things on there, right? You have to build it from the beginning. And I would say the most ultimately secure cars of the future are cars that actually help you drive better. They don't just have an airbag. 
to help you after the crash. Airbags only good, right, when you hit something. What you want is to not hit something. And that's the idea of building software with security inside it. It's a car that uh, in, in, the analogy does carry forward. So it's a great analogy. You want cars that don't allow you to get into a crash at all, ever. Maybe we'll remove the airbags. Once the cars don't get in accidents anymore, this would even be better. So yes, I think it's a perfect, almost perfect analogy. John, Gal, thank you so much for taking time out today. And not only talk about your partnership, but also share a lot of insights about uh, security, both from the technology perspective, the solutions that are there from folks like Slim, but also having a security mindset and culture as well. So thanks for those insights. And as usual, I would love to uh, have you both on the show. Thank you. Thank, thank you, so you Swap. Much. Appreciate it.